In this video, we're going to create this interactive animated glass morphic icon in Figma. So the way it works is that you hover over this icon, it changes states, it's animated, and then you click it, and this whole analytics active state appears, and then you move back out and it reverts back to the initial state. And if you're new to Figma, make sure to check out my playlist called Figma Basics, where you can find exactly what the title says. So we're gonna start by creating a rectangle that's 110 by 110. It's gonna be white. And also we're gonna duplicate that and make it bigger, make that one blue and move it into the background behind the first square. We wanna decrease the opacity of this to around um, 50. And again, we wanna duplicate the rectangle and then create one that's 20 by 80. This one is gonna have a fill that's 100% and it's also gonna be fully rounded like this. And then duplicate again and again to create the three bars. We're gonna make sure that the distance from the edges is even across all sides. So now from the top and bottom we have 15 but from the right side we have 16 and from the left side we have 16 as well. Which means we have to move the left and the right one one pixel to the left and right respectively. So now it should be similar on all sides. We're going to group these, name this bars, and then each of them, each of these bars is going to have like a name. This is going to be, we're going to make sure the first one is at the top. This is going to be bar one, bar two, bar three. And this background, that's going to be rounded as well. Then we're just going to play around with the sizes of this icon and just, yeah, I think this should work. This module is gonna have not only the icon, which now we can group and call that icon, but it's also gonna have a text that says analytics. I'm using Avenue Next with some spacing and font size of 60. So let's now make sure we finalize this state, which is gonna be when the module is active, when you actually click it. So this is gonna contain all the elements and all visual effects and so on. So first of all, we wanna you know, center that against the background, the icon, as well as the text. And again, make sure this is similar on all sides. So 35 from each side. Think about this distance looks good. That's 35 pixels as well. And then just extend that to around whichever value looks looks good. So I don't know, 500. And we're gonna round this completely. And maybe that also means we're gonna have to modify the size. So I think this looks better. Good, so now that's the final state. Let's adjust the color. So we're gonna choose like this one maybe. I'm gonna add a fill. This fill is gonna be like maybe cyan. It's gonna be there as a gradient. We're gonna position that right here. And also maybe we wanna decrease the opacity of the cyan a bit, or, or we could move that, the origin point of the gradient, a little bit below the edges of the rectangle. I think this works. You can also add a stroke. So this stroke is gonna be a white, a radial gradient, mimicking light coming from the top left and also decreasing the opacity, maybe adding another stroke or at least the white color, the blue color, but a bit darker maybe like this, also through a gradient. All right, so we have this. Just just by adding a gradient background and adding a stroke, this looks, I think, way better than the previous version. Let's compare this. You look at this, I think this is definitely a step in the right direction. So it's more visually interesting and all that good stuff. And now, what we want to do is add these strokes to the, these bars as well, or maybe even even better, add an inner shadow that's gonna be positioned uh, from the like this. You know, this immediately makes these bars look as little bit like three D objects. That's desirable. So we're gonna to make this even more believable. We're gonna take this color of the shadow and the sample the color from the button background with lower opacity. Maybe make it more to the cyan side. Yeah, by changing the color of the shadow, this makes it look even more as, a, as an object, an actual 3D object, which it isn't. So that's a bit of a optical illusion. 
right there. And also for this rectangle, for this icon background, let's keep the naming clear. We want to enable background blur, right? So this background blur is going to be around 40 and we can test how this looks when, right? So this is this is what we are going for, right? This is the look we want to achieve. So this looks a bit glass morphic. Yeah, this is something we want. So maybe we're going to experiment with the background blur amounts. I would say that's a, maybe a bit too low, 30, 40, maybe a bit too much. So why don't we settle on 30? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's better. Uh, this whole icon is going to have, or this icon background is going to have a drop shadow that's going to be like this blurred, which makes it look as an actual object even more. And now if we like move this stuff around, I think, yeah. So the shadow helps us to, helps this icon background to not blend in too much with light background behind the icon uh, so that's good maybe let's remove this crease the stroke with yeah to around eight or seven and i mean uh what i really like about this is just a very few basic adjustments and you can see that this is a whole different level of visual experience um, and we we did just a couple of things right we added a, a gradient we added the stroke we added couple effects and it I think it looks completely different this looks very plastic and this is just very flat and this is very elaborate I would think sophisticated even maybe and this is gonna have a stroke as well actually we're gonna we're gonna copy these strokes from the blue background onto this square again helps us to achieve the, the plastic look that we're gonna go for again maybe we're gonna turn this over to the cyan not necessarily this color maybe just a little or maybe keep it even black and the really decrease the opacity maybe change that to this second row could be try cyan let's test this nope doesn't work we're gonna keep it white and maybe we want to add another layer of the fill and that's gonna be white like this and again present in a radial gradient uh, and originating from the bottom center of the background like this or actually from the top left maybe would that would be better yeah like this mm -hmm. and so now we can can check out what what looks like when when the background is just partially beneath the icon I mean, this is the look we are going for and this whole shadow could be maybe moved a bit to the left and then we could add shadows to individual bars. Very, these ones should be very subtle, maybe like this, but the opacity very low, like seven, eight. Yeah, so these effects make sure that the icon looks 3D. I mean, when you compare these two, this makes it look 3D as an object. And even though it's, it's fully 2D, I mean, we are in Figma, there's nothing, no 3D space going on, but you can mimic that. And uh, it's visually more interesting because uh, humans tend to react, so like people tend to react to objects on screen that resemble real life objects, things that look like they are actual 3D objects that you can touch. That's, um, that triggers the same reaction in the brain as if you'd see an actual object in. Um, then the suggestion might be that you want to interact with that with your hands so that maybe you know you want to click that or just want to observe that closer. And maybe this gradient could originate from the icon. I don't know, let's test that. Well, not from the middle. And so another option to kind of make this look, make this background look plastic is inner shadow, similar to these bars. So we're gonna copy this and test and compare which one looks better. So we're gonna remove the stroke, right? And now we're gonna go to effects for this background and then just add an inner shadow coming from the top, that one's gonna be white, and then duplicate that, and this one's gonna be black and coming from the bottom right. So X minus four and Y minus four. And we also maybe wanna increase the blur to seven, decrease the opacity of the black one, and maybe increase the opacity of the white one. 
little bit. So when you now look at this, I maybe like this one, this version better because this looks, this looks softer and maybe is closer to the overall feel that we want to achieve, right? So I think we should move this one aside for now, just but keep it there. So maybe we want to return back to this version later and we're going to continue with this one. Maybe change the color from black to dark blue. Yeah, I think that's better. Like this. Yeah. So I think this is ready to be turned into a component. So we're gonna select this, then go here, create a component. We're gonna name this analytics. Analytics. And we wanna make two more variants. So first, we're gonna just define the very basic one and that's the default one. And the default one, well, first of all, the icon is gonna be in the middle and the text is gonna be all the way to the right, also invisible. So we're gonna push the opacity down to zero. This rectangle, we're gonna also decrease its size, maybe decrease the height of this to 160 by 160, decrease the rounding. So in this case, we do need 90, but in this case we would like to keep this at 40 maybe. Move that a little bit to the right, like this. And this state is gonna be called default. This state is gonna be called active. And the property is gonna be called state. So maybe let's play around with this element right here. Let me move it over here. Yeah, this looks right. We're gonna center this against the background. Yeah, and also we're gonna decrease the opacity of the inner shadow to about 24, make it a little more subtle than in this state. Cool, so now we have the default state, we have the open state, and we want to prepare the hover state. So we're gonna select this and then click this icon. This state is gonna be called hover. And just so that we have the correct order and we keep the first things first, move the default state to the very top. So that's like the initial, the first one, then we have to hover in the second place and actually final open active state towards the bottom. So to define the hover state, we want to... I have this idea that when you hover over this, the icon could kind of move into the middle and the square, the background square as well. And the background square would kind of increase in size like this. Right? And then just round it like this, right? So this could be like, this is the default state and then you hover over this and you can see it changes to here. And also these bars could like move, change a bit to kind of reflect that something's happening, something like this. Not only this will move and rearrange in this way, it will also, these bars will move. So I think that that could be pretty cool. So let's actually, let, let's set up the, the interaction, right? So. We have a default state, nothing happens. We're gonna to go to prototype and then just like click and drag to this hover state. And we're gonna say while hovering, change to state hover. And it's gonna, this is important, it's gonna smart animate. It's gonna be like very quick. So I don't know, 90 milliseconds. And from this state, once you actually click it, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna, go here, right? So on click, change to state active. And smart animate is gonna take like one, 110 milliseconds. So slightly longer than the previous transition, but still very quick. And then we could also define that when you click it again, you revert back to the initial state. And all of these, keep in mind, need to be smart animate. So on click, change to default, smart animate is out 110. So let's actually test what we built. Let's actually see if this looks good and maybe do adjustments if we feel like um, it's needed. So I'm gonna create a frame. Frame is gonna be 1000 by 600. No, 600. And it's gonna be analytics, interactive icon. And we go to assets and then analytics right here. So since on a light background, I think the shadow is not working very well. So what we want to do maybe is disable the shadow for now, just for these purposes, and just keep it purely like this. I'm going to select the frame and launch the prototype. So this looks all right, but I think first the transitions are too quick. And also this white, you know, the bars change, change sizes nicely and um, it's solid, but I think something's wrong with the white square. 
square. So we're gonna try and figure out what it is. So maybe if we ungroup everything. Okay, so I created a new icon background. For some reason now it works. And one last adjustment we wanna make is create a copy of, by the way, I also shrunk this to be half the size. I think it looks better when it's smaller. So I would, what I would do here is, since, we, since when we click this, like when we disable this, it reverts back to, uh, to the default state. But since we are already hovering over this, it immediately goes to hover again. And we don't want to do that necessarily. We want this to stay, to stay, and not directly switch states so quickly. So maybe what we want to do is set this interaction to be not on click but mouse leave. So when we leave with the mouse this area is gonna revert back to the default state and then when we hover back it's gonna switch to the hover state. So thanks to using Smart Animate everywhere. Now these elements are actually moving when switching through individual states. So that's what Smart Animate is good for. If we turned off Smart Animate and instead we went for instant, this is what the hover interaction would look like. I mean, it's not bad, but I think the Smart Animation looks significantly better, right? I think this that's way more satisfying. We also wanna maybe do ease in and out on all of these interactions. Ease in and out, ease in and out. And also we wanna maybe add a shadow to the blue background. Add a drop shadow that's gonna be blurry and sample the color, decrease opacity, you know, make it kind of look glowy. Make it look as if it's glowing. Very subtle, at 10%. We also wanna copy this to this state and this state as well, right? So it's very subtle, but I think it makes a bit of a difference. Maybe to 16, make this a little bit bigger, 110. And also one last adjustment. We wanna make this look as if it's originating from the left. So icon background in this state is ha has 60 in its X position. And right now this has 45. Yeah, I think that could work. And then that's gonna, that's gonna change the animation a little bit. I'm gonna show you right away. So... That means the icon is gonna stay in approximately the same position, right? I can see that we five pixels are missing. So once again, one, two, three, four, five. And here as well, one, two, three, four, five. And now a very important question, what is this good for? So I imagine like this could be used in, for example, in a sidebar menu or something like that, where you would have like multiple of these icons. You know what I mean? Like I could see like this being arranged in this way where you would have multiple icons and you would hover over each one and it's gonna change. So this one is gonna, you know, it's gonna go like this. So that's maybe one use case, but I'm sure you're gonna figure out plenty of use cases for this. You could then make like multiple, like a whole set of these elements and with different colors, I think that would look very good. So yeah, yeah, I think this is it. I think we are done here. I think uh, I can't think of any other adjustments to make. So this is the result. This is the final animated interactive icon for analytics. It's all moving has all these effects, I think. I think this is very interesting visually and also pleasant to interact with. So if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you leaving a like. And if you want to see more tutorials on Figma and digital design and UX design and UI design, all that stuff, definitely check out my channel and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in today and thank you for watching all the way to the very end. And let me know in the comments below if maybe there was something unclear. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.